I think China will continue this momentum to grow. I think we're actually kind of sort of like go back to the、uh, culture revolution kind of era. When Xi Jinping came to power a decade ago, he inherited a China that was rising economically and diplomatically. But under his watch, it's become less open and more conservative. I traveled to Chongqing, a major landmark in Xi's rise to power, to see how the city and its people have changed in the past decade, and to find out what it can tell us about China's next ten years. This municipality is the size of Austria. And the place where Xi ousted his main leadership rival Bo Xilai. Today, Chongqing has undergone a population and construction boom that some say masks a backsliding in freedoms. Others, like 33-year-old education entrepreneur Huang Yi, see it differently. I definitely feel China is becoming stronger. <laughs> I thought I'm getting more attention in the peer group. Uh, and our living environment becomes more international and convenient. Huang Yi's former employer, New Oriental, fired 60,000 staff in the wake of Xi's crackdown on private tutoring, all in the name of common prosperity. It is their responsibility to make the decision for the business, for the industry, for the public, and I think it's necessary for them to have this regulation. Uh, policies, if they think they are right for the public. This Instagrammable bookstore has a shrine-like display of books dedicated to Xi, while English language shelves at most bookshops in China have been shrinking. Xi has been reshaping the country's education system, putting greater emphasis on patriotic study, and downplaying the importance of foreign languages. Thirty-two-year-old Yang, who studied abroad, asked for his identity not to be revealed. I heard from the news, especially from the Western news, like、uh, our president doesn't really want us young kids to learn English anymore because they don't really want you to have like this language tool to get to know, you know, what the outside world was like. The changes are part of a series of education-related moves aimed at ensuring. Future generations remain loyal to the party, which celebrated its 100th anniversary in July 2021. I think my experience of studying abroad exposed me to this new way of、um, critical thinking or maybe creative thinking. Hanging out with my peers, and whenever we encounter like something like political issues, of course、uh, they disagree with me. The Communist Party was weakened by decades of corruption and decentralization during the boom years. Since then, Xi's campaign to claw back control has made him China's most powerful man since Mao Zedong. But it's come at the expense of social and economic freedoms, and China's Great Firewall, which blocks foreign ideas from the internet, has been bolstered by the physical closing of borders during the pandemic. This zero COVID policy or something like that? How can you battle a virus? You're gonna have to live with it. The impact of this is being seen on the economy. Lockdowns mean China is unlikely to meet its already watered-down goal of 5.5% growth this year. Youth unemployment reached almost 20% in July, and the property sector faces some of its most serious challenges yet. After the Cultural Revolution, people are like being, I would say, brainwashed to be like super competitive. Everything is aiming for fame, money, and property, and everything. Like we kind of lost. That really, really good Chinese characters. Of course, I hope my business goes well. I hope there would be、um, policies which would benefit my business. But I would respect the government's decision. Xi has sought to narrow the nation's wealth gap in his bid to build a prosperous and strong society. And while COVID zero may be weighing on the economy for now. It's also kept the debt toll far below that seen elsewhere.